February 9th, Inner Temple, Training Hall. We still don't know what time it is! Okay. Right. Is this what Godo was talking about? Yeah. The trick locks. Now then, Iris. Please remove these at once. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm afraid I can't. It, it's not possible for me. What? During the earthquake when the cavern was in danger of caving in, Iris escaped. And I know that there was only one lock when I came here. So you're saying that you can't undo the new locks? Yes. Only I was stronger. Edgeworth, how are you feeling? You, you look a little pale in the face. Like you're one to talk with your face all green. Miles Edgeworth, go and get some air. I'll watch over the suspect. You go and get a grip on yourself. Don't be ridiculous. I'm perfectly... <laughs> There's no telling what sort of mistakes you could make in your current state. Go and get some rest. That's your only concern right now, Miles Edgeworth. Understood. I'll handle the investigation in the garden. You take care of things here. Edgeworth. He's got so much pride that he's probably off crying in a corner of the garden. Pride is simply another trap that hinders us in our lives. That said, one must have pride to be effective on the job. At any rate, it seems that this is where we part ways, Phoenix Wright. I'm going to stay here and see if I can't help solve these bothersome puzzles. I see. Well, thanks for your help. Now then, do you mind if I ask you a few things, Iris? No, not at all. Alright. Talk to me, woman! <laughs> sorry. Why did you make a run for it, Iris? I... I'm sorry. I heard the inner temple had been severely shaken by the strong earthquake we had. I... I was so worried. I just had to come and see. In other words, you didn't run away to escape the law. At least we're clear on that. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the sacred cavern was alright, but... But what? Then I saw these chains here. I saw all these extra locks that someone had put on the sacred cavern's door, and... Hmm. Who in the world would have done something like this? Trick lock. These trick locks are a sacred treasure of the Korean tradition. There are hundreds of ways to set them. That's why only the person who set the lock can open it. Huh. And you aren't the one who set these locks? I don't think it's that simple, Francisco von Karma. When we were here the first time, there was only one lock. But now, somehow, there's five of them. What does that mean? It means that someone wanted to secure the place even more. And they wanted to secure it before you got here, Iris. Presumably because they wanted to make sure Maya couldn't get out. This means that Iris can only open one of these locks. The first one. Yes, that's correct. What? Iris, try to think, please. Isn't there any way around this? Well, like I said, there are hundreds of different ways to set these locks. I suppose if I went through every combination with each one, I could remove them, but... It will take time, won't it? Yes. About a day, if I had to guess. A whole day? Well, that's better than leaving the locks in place. Will you do this for us? Sure. I'll do whatever I can. You gotta wait another day? Hang in there, Maya. You're gonna have to call in your inner, str call in your inner strength now. The night of the crime. You know what, Iris? There's still one thing I don't quite get. And what might that be, Phoenix Wright? I think it's obvious. Iris, on the night of the murder, where were you? Please, Iris, don't give me that look. You told us that you were in your room in Hazakura Temple at the, t at the time of the incident. But you were seen at the same evening, that same evening at the Inner Temple. And then, you were spotted at the scene of the crime in Hazakura Temple, too. Being spotted at both Hazakura Temple and the Inner Temple. It's as if you were... Well, Iris, I think it's about time you told us the truth.
Oh, just three this time, huh? Okay. <laughs> I was expecting more, but all right, whatever. I knew it. There's something going on here that we don't know about. Okay. Uh. Bye now. <laughs> okay. Um. How about we go to the garden? See if there's um. Let's see if uh. You know. Edgeworth's doing okay. The cops are still combing the place. They look pretty nervous. I'd be nervous too. It's got to be a tough job. Sup? Especially with someone giving you the giving you the evil eye the whole time. Mutter, mutter. How could I have done that? Wow. I can't believe it's still bothering him. Edgeworth? Ah! Uh, did he run and hide? Hey! Don't you dare run away! Wow, he actually tried to run away. <laughs> what do you want, right? What do I want? If you came here to laugh at me, then get on with it. Go on, laugh away. I was ready to hug it out with him, but he's just the same prideful Edgeworth. You went back to the criminal affairs department, right? You said you wanted to look into something concerning Iris. Y yes And thanks to what I found, I was reminded of something terrible. Okay. Oh, you talk about it. Investigation. You guys are putting a lot of effort into the investigation of the garden here, huh? There's a high chance this is the actual scene of the crime. That's that's why. You mean because of the writing and, and blood and the talisman in the snow? Exactly. As you know, those things couldn't have been planted here after the murder. But surely, you don't suspect... Maya, do you? We have to treat everyone as a suspect. Maya as well as Iris. It's our job, right? Earthquakes! So, I guess you still haven't gotten over your fear of earthquakes. No, thankfully my nightmares have stopped. But still, if the ground gives even the slightest tremor, I find myself short of breath. Seventeen years ago, when we were little school kids at the same elementary school, Edgeworth found himself in the middle of a murder. It all started with that big quake that hit the courthouse. Yes, I was stuck in the elevator with my father, who was a defense, a defense lawyer. We were deprived of oxygen and we passed out. That's when it happened. That single gunshot shattered my whole life. I lost everything that day, all because of that earthquake. My dreams, my family, and myself. It's been more than 17 years now. And that case was finally resolved two years ago, right? You think I don't know that? I was there! But it was such a shock, I never imagined I could be so wrong about myself and my life. I'm sorry, right? There's just nothing else I can say. Not after you chose to become a lawyer for my sake. And not after you saved me. Edgeworth, you're stronger than you think, so no more of this self-pity, okay? How about you say that out loud and not in a monologue? <laughs> there was something that bothered me about her from the moment we met. I felt like I'd seen her somewhere before. No, wait. Not somewhere. I felt like I'd seen her in court before. So you went back to the criminal affairs department to look for her file? Yes, I checked over every other... Wait. Checked over every case file I've ever worked on. And I was right. I had seen her face before, six years ago. Six years ago? It was my first appearance in court. And as cases go, it was my worst nightmare. So, who is she? I'm sorry, right? I can't give that information away to a member of the general public. What? Why not? It might be a crucial piece of evidence. It might be the... Ugh. It might be the crucial piece of the puzzle that solves this case. The woman I knew was the daughter of a jewelry store owner. She had nothing to do with Iris and Hazakura Temple. And neither did the case. No. That woman is completely unrelated to this murder. Unrelated? Yes, I can say that with complete confidence. You're wrong, Edgeworth. She's totally related to this case. I need to fill Edgeworth in. I need to explain the connection between Iris and the woman Edgeworth knew. Uh, okay. How... Can I do that now, or... Um... 
Okay, whatever. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> um, where should I go now? I guess I gotta leave. Yep, <laughs> February 9th. Temple Gate. Finally getting to the bottom of this case. I can count on Iris to break those locks, so I should try to gather more clues. From Sister Bikini, Edgeworth, Gumshoe, and Pearls. Wherever she went, we don't even know where she is. Alright, um, suspension bridge, here we go. Gumshoe! I'm calling it. It's Gumshoe. 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 Oh, man, come on! <laughs> it's weird that there's no one around all of a sudden. It sure gets quiet up here in the mountains when you're all on your own. Speaking of alone, I guess I should go check on the shack just down this path. Maybe I'll find Larry there sulking again. Sulking or skulking? Because I know they both technically mean the same thing, but skulking seems more like the... whatever. Sulking is more like an emotion, and skulking seems like the actual activity, you know? But anyway. Oh, Mr. Nick! Pearls, what are you doing here? N nothing What about Mystic Maya? Is she okay? Is she alright? Why am I keep flubbing my lines? <laughs> God. Um, well, we don't know yet. Oh, I see. Hey, what do you think you're doing here, Nick? Larry. This is the loser's shack, where losers get together to lose themselves. This is the... What? Hey, we find comfort in each other's failures, okay? You got a problem with that? Look, Mr. Nick, Mr. Larice did a picture of me. That's, um, great, Pearls. We're gonna gather firewood now. We'll be cooking some hot, rotten potatoes over a miserable little campfire. So stay out of our way. <laughs> I don't believe this. Why can't he try getting fired up over becoming a better man? No one believes a word to say. Wait, no one believes a word I say anymore. Listen to me, Pearl. You don't want to trust this kind of guy, okay? He'll only let you down. Oh, Mystic Maya. Okay. Dr. Pearl. Not Larry. Larissa's sketch. Larry, is there something you want to tell me about this picture? Heh. <laughs> I got nothing to say to you, Nick. My wife's here now with Pearl. Two losers cooking potatoes together forevermore. You're gonna run out of potatoes. If all you're doing is cooking potatoes, you're gonna run out of them. You're not gonna have any money, and then you won't have any potatoes, and then you'll starve to death and die. Frickin' Larry. Alright. What am I gonna do with him? Alright then. What do you think about this picture of Pearls? I... I think it's really well drawn. I can't draw at all, so I think it's really amazing. See? Someone appreciates it. It's tough getting the flames to look like that, you know? I, actually, I bet it is, because I'm not an artist either. It's supposed to be Sister Iris flying through the air, isn't it? I love it. It's like a dream. A wonderful fantasy. No, no, no. It wasn't a dream. She really flew. I'm telling you, Iris really flew that night. But Mr. Larice. Uh, or should I say, meh. <laughs> Not you too. Please don't look at me like that, Pearl. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of nutcase, I beg of you. I guess this picture really is a representation of what Larry thinks he saw. Okay, so I was half asleep when I was here that night. But I was wide awake after the lightning struck. And I saw what I saw. It was exactly like I drew in the picture. And it looks like I don't have any choice but to take this sketch at face value. Hey, what's with the look of doubt on your face? Uh, I doubt you. Is that good enough for you? <sighs> okay, anyway. Now that... We are talking to Pearl again. We're going to go ahead and end it off. In the next part, we shall continue our investigation. So see you then.